I think Cobra Golf are taking on a huge risk. Should they have done this? I'm not sure. Let me explain. So over the last couple of years, Cobra Golf have really turned the brand around. They've done incredible with the drivers, the irons, the wedges. They've got some fantastic athletes repping the brand. Certainly Bryson DeChambeau is killing it with the Cobra lineup. Now they're moving into a category which they've got to be good at. Like they've got to be really good because this is a fierce market. Cobra Golf are moving into the putter market lineup. They've got the vintage lineup which is very classic, a little bit of technology, but not loads, which I'm going to show you first. Then they are really pushing on this 3D printed model. You might have seen last year, I did a little concept putter that they brought out at the back end of last year. Well, they're bringing out a brand new lineup now, loads of different varieties of models. Let's get tested. I'm going to go vintage first, and then we'll move on to 3D printed next. So I've got two models here in the vintage lineup. I've got this one, which is a blade, which is the Sport 45 priced at 199 pounds. So is this one. This one is more of a mallet shape. This is called the Nova, which I must admit, I really like the look of this putter. Also priced 199. Now there is technology in this vintage putter. First thing I want to talk about is the face. This is really clever. So they've had a collaboration with SIK, S-I-K. And what they've got here on the face is variable loft. So if you hit down on the putter, the top loft is going to help you if you hit more up on the putter the bottom loft is going to help you i really like that it's quite a clever little thing and it could really improve the roll apart from that this is just a classic looking putter i like the thick handle on it it's got arcos in the grip as well which is a really cool feature if you use it let's get my first impressions on the feel of these vintage putters not a bad roll Nice. I like the feel. That's something that I definitely called out in the last Cobra Concept Putter review. I wasn't the biggest fan of the feel. That feels really good in the vintage lineup. This one, I'm a big fan of that shape. The Nova, almost a, like an Odyssey number seven. That's beautiful. I love how that sits behind the ball. Oh, that's really nice. Didn't quite hit it firm enough. Very nice. Let's do a little bit more testing. So let me reiterate why this is a risk for Cobra. Because they're doing so well, we're making good woods, good irons, wedges, etc. They can't afford or risk to bring out a putter lineup that's not very good. You look at brands like Callaway, they have the Odyssey lineup, which is obviously great putters, Titleist with the Scotty Cameron, and now TaylorMade more recently have smashed the putter market as well. So this is a big risk for Cobra. They've got to be good, otherwise it could really damage the brand. How cool is that? <laughs> you can pick it up with the fangs at the back. Right, first off, love this model. The Nova is gorgeous. Love the feel of it. It's definitely softer than that Concepts one I've tested before. I love the shape, love the balance. Everything about this putter I really like. Come on to one tiny little detail in a second. The blade model is nice. It's not my kind of, I'm not the biggest fan of a, a real typical classic blade but feels just as good as the Nova, and I think a lot of people will like this. Now, I put in a big butt before. On the back of the putter, there is something I noticed with regards to the paintwork. Now, it's not gonna affect performance, granted, but I noticed on the back here some very, very shoddy paintwork. Now, I will reward and give praise to my children if they paint inside the lines, but that, they're a six, four, and two-year-old. Whoever painted this paintwork does not get a reward. I mean, it's, it's just shoddy. It looks like a toddler's honestly drawn the paint on this. And granted, it's not gonna affect performance, but if you're spending 200 pound on a putter, you want it to be right. And the other thing, it just 
gives me a level of doubt. I'm not accusing that this is wrong, but a level of doubt. The paintwork's that bad. Can I fully trust everything that's on this putter? Can I fully trust the loft is correct? The balancing, the weighting, the length. Attention to detail is key. And it's something they definitely missed on that model. Right, let's go on to the 3D printed. I'm excited about these ones. There's a lot more technology in these. So 3D printed putters, first off, there's a jump in price. They jump to 269 now because of more technology. More story behind these putters. A couple of things that are the same. You get the same sick face, you get the same grip, you get the same Arcos. Apart from that, we do definitely see a different styling with the 3D printed. I mean, they are very um, futuristic. I think they're going to split opinions. I think some people are going to love them. Some people are not going to like them. I've got three models. This is the Grand Sport 35. Kind of a bl chunky, bladey thing. I must admit, I am not a big fan of the look of that putter. And I'm not quite sure who would be, but I'm sure there's some people out there that would. Now, these models are quite interesting because, big story with the 3D printed, because they can break it up and they can create this kind of lattice design inside with the 3D printing and use loads of different elements and distribute the weight more, these putters have apparently got a much higher MOI, which for simple terms means they're more forgiving, certainly on longer putts, when you maybe your stroke is getting longer and it's harder to hit the middle of the club face, these putters are supposed to be more forgiving. I'm gonna test that theory. That's the Supernova, quite similar to that other one that I liked before, the Nova in the vintage lineup. And then we've got this beast. You ready for this? Underneath here is apparently the most forgiving model. This is the Agera. Look at that. I mean, <laughs> it kind of looks a little bit like a devil's head shape there. I mean, this thing is a beast of a putter. The lattice design inside is very complex. It's very intricate. It, it's actually, like I say, a lot has gone into this. This is supposed to be the most forgiving model. So let's get, see if that's the case. This also comes in an arm lock version as well, where the grip is longer, so you can kind of anchor it to your arm. Either way, let's test a few of these putters. Um, very, very different looking to vintage. I'm not sure if I like them as much. Okay, 3D printed putters. Let me give a little bit of a summary of this range that I've just tested. There's two things I've noticed. Number one being the looks. I I'm just not getting it. I'm just not loving the looks at all. They're a bit too, they're too, they're too busy. There's too much going on. Even the kind of blade model looks like just a big lump of kind of metal and, and 3D printed plastic. It's not very nice. The other thing I feel when I'm putting with these putters, there's a there's a this different sound that I get, and I can only describe it as like almost like a plastic clicky noise. It's not very nice at all. There are, however, two things I do quite like. I saw it on the vintage range, and definitely this range as well. I, I'm a big fan of this face. I describe it as almost like the ball when it comes off the putter face. It looks like it's glued to the green. It just rolls so nicely. It's really nice. Another thing, I think there is some level of forgiveness. When I've hit it not in the centre, I did find on some of the short puts it to feel like it was going back towards the hole. However, I've got a proper test now. I'm 60 foot away from the flag. I've got six golf balls and I've got this, the beast, the devil, the Aguera. Can I make six two puts? Because again, with a more forgiving putter, as, I sw as my swing gets longer, there's a possibility I'm not gonna strike the middle. Is this massively forgiving putter gonna help me? And if that's the case, there could be a future in putters like this. That's a very good start. Not bad. Oh. It's 
It's got a chance. It's got a chance. Oh! So as we walk up here, there are four ports I'm ecstatic with. Two tappings and two that I'm expecting to hold. Very pleased with those. There's two, however, that came up short. Now, granted, I probably just didn't quite hit them hard enough. I wouldn't massively say that it was the putter's fault. I felt like I just didn't give it enough speed. And it goes to show you can have all the most forgiving putter in the world. But if you're not putting a good stroke on it with the right speed, it's still going to be very difficult to get the ball to the hole. For me, this lineup is interesting. I don't think they've nailed the 3D printed feel yet. That's one thing I want to touch on. And I also feel that if they only brought the vintage range out, I don't think there'd be enough people that was excited about it. So I understand both lineups. For me, there's a potential future in this. I'd be intrigued to see how it goes. I'm a huge fan of the sick face. Love that. Uh, we'll see what 3D printed goes. But you never know, I might put that vintage one in the bag because I was a big fan of that. Guys, thanks for watching. Cobra Putter. I don't think they've made a mistake, but I think there is room for improvement. We'll see you next time.